Hi, welcome to Chapter 10 Solutions. The tip of the day is that if you find yourself making excuses about studying, remember that you just need to study a little bit each day. If you can study most days of the week, that will be more effective than studying in huge blocks of time, say over the weekend. So just keep in mind, even if you only have 15 or 20 minutes, that might just be enough time to learn a new concept. Okay, we're going to get started with number one. Number one says that if the circumference of a circle is 2 pi, what is the area? This question is kind of like an if-then question. You know that if this is true, then what is this? So, the circumference formula is 2 pi r, and the area formula is pi r squared. Make sure you have those two things memorized. So, what you'll notice is that what's shared between the circumference and the area is the variable r. We don't know what r is. Even though pi also appears to be an unknown, we know that that's a constant of 3.14 dot dot dot. So we need to figure out what r is. Once we figure out what r is here, we can plug it into the area formula. So the circumference is 2 pi r, and in this case the circumference is 2 pi. If we solve for r by dividing both sides by 2 pi, we find that r is equal to 1. And then all we need to do is plug that 1 in right here. So pi r squared, in this case, is simply pi, and the answer is c. Number 2. If you now understand number 1, um, number 2 should be pretty straightforward because it's just in the reverse. So at this point, we're given the area and asked to find the circumference. So we're going to do something similar. We're going to set 2 pi equal to the area and figure out what r is. And then we're going to plug that value of r into the circumference formula of 2 pi r. So the area equals pi r squared. So 2 pi in this case is equal to pi r squared. You'll notice that if you divide both sides by pi, the pi's cancel and you get r squared equals 2. To find out what r is, you cannot divide by 2. You want to undo the square by taking the square root of both sides. So the square root of a squared number is just that underlying number, so your radius is the square root of 2. Normally, if you take the square root of a squared number, you'd have to say plus or minus. However, since we're talking about a length, we know that it can only be positive. So r is equal to the square root of 2. You plug the square root of 2 down here, 2 times pi times the square root of 2. And that is simply 2 root 2 pi. Notice your answer choices are in terms of pi, so you don't need to um, convert this at all. So the answer is D for 2. Number 3. Number 3, we're given two circles, circle A and circle B. And we're told that circle A has a radius of x, and circle B has a radius of 2x. We are asked to find the ratio of their areas. Notice that they switch the question, and they want the ratio of B to A. Okay, so all we have to do is find the area of both of our circles and then put it into a ratio. So area again is pi r squared, that's the formula. So since our r in this case is x, the area of circle A is simply pi x squared. The area of circle B is pi times 2x squared. Notice I put this 2x in parentheses because this entire um, radius is squared. If you don't do that, you might end up with pi 2x squared when it's really 4x squared pi. Doesn't matter if the pi is in front or back, but just make sure you have a 4 right here and not a 2. Okay? So now the ratio of b to a is going to be 4x squared pi to x squared pi. Now, this is looking pretty messy. If you look at our answer choices, though, you see that all of these things can cancel out. So, since there's an x squared on both sides and a pi on both sides, I can divide both sides by x squared pi to get rid of it and simplify it. Remember, ratio, like an equation, as long as you do the same thing to both sides, you're keeping it equivalent. So all of this cancels out. Now remember, on your right side, um, if you're dividing the top and bottom by the exact same thing, it's just 1, okay? And over here you have 4 left, so the ratio of b to a is 4 to 1. Number 4. In number 4, we are given a circle with a sector of 45 degrees 
and a radius of 5 because we're told that OE is of length 5. And then we're asked to find the length of the arc from E to D. Okay? Now notice the length of the arc is part of the circumference. So when we do the formula for the length of an arc, we're going to use the circumference formula, which is 2 pi r. Notice, however, we don't want the entire circumference. We just want 45 three of the circumference because it's 45 degrees as the central angle, but all the way around is 360 degrees. So once we simplify this, we have our answer. So 45 divided by 360 is 1 eighth times 2 pi r, and our r is 5. So if you have trouble multiplying this, remember that these two integers can be put over 1, and you multiply your numerators across, and you get 10 pi divided by 8 which is 5 pi over 4. So you can say 5 pi over 4 or 5 fourths pi. It's the exact same thing. So number 4 is D. Number 5. For number 5 we have the same circle and the same information but in this, at, at this point instead of being asked to find the length of the arc we're asked to find the area of the sector. So the area of the sector means we're going to use the area formula of pi r squared and again, we don't ha we're not getting the entire area of the circle, just 45 three sixtieths of the circle. So that times pi r squared. In this case, our, our r is still 5, and we square it. So if we simplify this, again, 45 over 360 is 1 eighth when we reduce, times 25 times pi. So it's 25 over 8 pi and the answer is E. Number six. Number six we're asked to find the area of the unshaded sector. They're telling us that the area of the unshaded sector is P pi. So the area of unshaded and we're asked to find P to the nearest tenth because we have to type in our own answer here. So all the other information is still the same we know that this area here is 25 over 8 pi. So we want to know what this area is over here. There are two options for this. We can use the same formula that we did before for the area of the sector. Notice we're looking for this information over here though. We need to find out what this angle is. So this angle is 360 degrees minus 45 degrees. Okay, so 360 over uh, minus 45 is going to be 315 divided by 360 times pi r squared. So it's going to be times 25 pi. When we reduce this, notice when we reduced um, 45 over 360, we got 1 eighth. When we do reduce 315 over 360, since that's the rest of it, we're going to get 7 eighths times this 25 times pi we get 175 over 8 pi. And to the nearest tenth, that's 21.9. So in your calculator you'll do 175 divided by 8 times this pi. Okay. The other way you could do it is to find the area of the entire circle and then subtract the 25 over 8 pi. So the area of the entire circle is going to be pi r squared pi r squared. We know our r is 5, so that's just 25 pi, and then from that we would subtract the area of the shaded to get the area of the unshaded. So 175 over 8 pi. Number 7. For number 7 we're asked, for what length radius is the area equal to twice the circumference? So, this is actually a fairly straightforward problem if you're able to set it up like this. So the area is equal to twice the circumference. So the area formula again is pi r squared. And we want twice the circumference, which is 2 pi r. We get pi r squared equals 4 pi r. And remember, we are solving for r here. We want to get r by itself so we know what r is. So one thing you can do, we have r's on both sides and pi's on both sides. 
So if we divide both sides by pi and by r, we get rid of the pi's on both sides, and we get rid of the r on the right side. So our right side is simply 4. Over on the left side, we have r squared divided by r. That is simply r. Remember, r squared divided by r is dividing by r to the first and we simply subtract our exponents to get r to the first. So when r is 4, that answer choice is e. When r is 4, the area is equal to twice the circumference. Number 8. Number 8, we're told we have two concentric circles. Please excuse the drawing of this uh, outer circle. We're told that um, radius a is 12 and radius b is 8, and we're asked to find the positive difference of the two areas. So, the positive difference means that we will be subtracting the area of B from A since A is bigger, okay? So, all we have to do is plug this 12 in here and plug the 8 in here, okay? So, over here we get 144 pi, that's 12 squared pi, minus 8 squared is 64, so minus 64 pi, and then we subtract to get 80 pi. So in a question like this, you see that this was pretty straightforward. So don't let a picture or some wording confuse you because it was actually a pretty straightforward question. So here, the answer is um, D, 80 pi. Number nine. For number nine, we are told that line segment AB is tangent to circle C at point B. That simply means that at um, point B, at the intersection of AB and BC, we have a right angle. We are asked to find um, the area of circle C in terms of pi. So how many times greater than pi is the area of circle C? So what you'll notice here is that we have a right triangle. So we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the length of this radius. Once we find the length of this radius, then we can plug it into the formula pi r squared for the area. Okay? So you remember that the Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Remember, c squared has to be the hypotenuse. So this is going to be 17 squared. We can make 15 our, our second leg of b squared, and then we'll have to solve for a. So a squared plus 15 squared equals 17 squared. So 15 squared is 225. 17 squared is 289. If we subtract 225 from both sides, we get a squared is 64, which means that a is 8. So this length is 8, and the area of our circle is pi r squared, so that is 8 squared, or 64 pi. So the answer then is simply 64, because it asks for, it says the area of circle C is how many times pi? Well, it's 64 times pi. So the answer is simply 64, and the reason they phrase it that way is so you can just type in the solution of 64. Okay? That includes chapter, concludes chapter 10 solutions. I hope that this went well. Make sure you go to the study plan and do the um, related problems in the official guide, and then go ahead and get started with chapter 11. See you back next time.